for the next 15 minutes we'll be talking about MRI anatomy of the cranial nerves. This is a simplified overview showing the cranial nerves from superior to inferior except the first and the twelfth cranial nerves. The second cranial nerve as you see arises from top of the midbrain. Third cranial nerve, the oculomotor, arises at the junction of the midbrain and the pons. The fourth and the fifth cranial nerves arise from the pons itself. The sixth cranial nerve arises from the pontomedullary junction, while the seventh and eighth cranial nerves arise from the lateral aspect of midbrain. Ninth, tenth and twelfth cranial nerves arise close to each other from the midbrain, while the eleventh cranial nerve arises most inferiorly from the cervical spinal cord. Students have been finding ingenious ways for remembering the cranial nerves. This is one of the ways. This is one more. So, a special point to remember is that the first and the second cranial nerves are not lined by Schwann cells. Therefore, if you see a mass lesion along the first or the second cranial nerves, it is not a schwannoma. Most commonly, it would be a glioma. While reporting cranial nerves, it is preferable to use numerical instead of the more common Roman style of numbering to avoid confusion. So we need isotropic sequences to visualize the cranial nerves. Isotropic sequences can be reconstructed in any plane regardless of the plane of acquisition. CIS and FIESTA are T2 meter sequences while VIBE and BRAVO are T1 meter sequences. Both of these can be obtained pre as well as post contrast. Of these CIS in Siemens and FIESTA in G are the most important because of high signal to noise ratio, less CSF flow artifacts and mixed T1 and T2 weighting which enables post contrast imaging also even though it is a T2 weighted sequence. Of these two sequences CIS is the one which is more commonly known amongst our neurosurgery colleagues because of the sheer popularity of Siemens machines. Cranial nerve segments is an important concept to understand. The segments are based on the structures through which each cranial nerve passes. Hence, each segment has a different imaging plane and each segment is best seen on a different sequence. The pathologies affecting each segment can also be different based on the structures adjacent to that segment. Knowledge of the segments of the cranial nerves helps in exact localization of the pathology and also in surgical planning. This is a very important diagram. It shows the simplified concept of segmental anatomy of the cranial nerves and it can be applied to all the cranial nerves. Going from left to right, Assuming outgoing cranial nerves, even though afferent as well as efferent fibers are present in the cranial nerves. The first segment is nuclear segment. That is the nucleus from which the cranial nerve arises. Second is the part of the cranial nerve which courses through the brain parenchyma itself. Both of these segments are not directly visualized on imaging, but their location can be determined based on certain landmarks. Next comes the cisternal segment. This segment is surrounded by CSF, hence it is clearly visualized on T2 weighted images including CIS and Fiesta. Next is the dural cave segment which is the part of the cranial nerve which invaginates into the dura. This is also surrounded by CSF and is also well seen on T2 weighted image. Next is the interdural segment in which the cranial nerve is about to leave the dura. It lies between the meningeal and the periosteal surface of the dura matter. Most familiar example of this will be the cavernous sinus in which the third, fourth, sixth and branches of the fifth cranial nerve are coursing. This segment is surrounded by venous blood. Hence, it is not easily seen on routine images, but it can be well visualized on post-contrast imaging. Next is the foraminal segment and as you can guess, it is the part which courses through the individual foramens. And this segment is surrounded by the bones and apart from the facial nerve, for all the other granular nerves, it is a very short segment. Then comes the extra foraminal segment, which can be a very long segment, especially in the case of the oculomotor nerve, facial nerve and the vagus nerve. 
it is surrounded by fat muscles or bone this segment is also well seen on different kinds of sequences depending on the location now coming to the individual anatomy of the cranial nerves overview of the first cranial nerve that is the olfactory nerve it consists of the olfactory bulb and the olfactory tract and it lies along the basic frontal region this is a coronal ct scan in the bone window it shows the csf segment of the olfactory nerve the bony landmark for this is the crista gallery which lies between the right and the left olfactory nerves the groove in which the nerve lies is called the olfactory groove the depth of the grooves is important knowledge for the ENT surgeon for surgeries in this area and there is a separate classification for the depth of this groove which is known as the Keros classification. This is the same area on coronal titubated imaging which shows the olfactory bulb surrounded by CSF as well as the basifrontal region. Now here two gyra are seen, one is the gyrus rectus medial and the olfactory gyrus lateral. The crista galli lies between the two nerves. This is an overview of the second cranial nerve, that is the optic nerve. It arises from the optic radiation, or rather, it ends in the optic radiation, which represents the parenchymal fascicular segment of this nerve. Also, along the course of the nerve are the nuclear segments represented by the medial and lateral geniculate bodies. The optic tract, optic chiasm, and part of the optic nerves is in the cisternal segment while the rest of the optic nerve goes through the other segments as we will see ahead. This is axial fat sac titubated image which shows the cisternal interdural foraminal extra foraminal segments of the optic nerve. The optic tract chiasm and the proximal optic nerves are the cisternal segments. The part which just enters the dura but not yet reach the foramen is the interdural segment. The part which enters the optic foramen is the foraminal segment, obviously, and the extra foraminal segment is more commonly known as the intraorbital segment of the optic nerve. This is the cisternal segment of the optic nerve at the level of the cavernous sinus. The inferior relations of the optic nerve are seen here, which is mainly the cavernous segment of the internal carotid artery. The relationships of the Extra foraminal, that is the intraorbital segment of the optic nerve, was seen in this coronal T1 weighted image of the right orbit. It is normally surrounded by the retrobulbar fat without any fat stranding in this area. The third, fourth, and sixth cranial nerves supply the extraocular muscles. All the muscles are supplied by the third cranial nerve except for the superior oblique supplied by the fourth and the lateral rectus, which is supplied by the sixth cranial nerve. This schematic shows the nuclear and the parenchymal as well as the cisternal segments of these nerves. This is the overview of the kilomotor nerve which shows the short nuclear and the parenchymal segment then the fairly long cisternal segment, the interdural segment, canalicular segment and the extra foraminal segment. This axial T2 and sagittal image shows the nuclear parenchymal and cisternal segments of the oculomotor nerve. The cisternal segment of the oculomotor nerve especially has important relations which is seen in this coronal t 2 image. Superiorly the posterior cerebral and inferiorly the superior cerebral artery are in close relation. So aneurysm of these arteries can affect the oculomotor nerve. This is the interdural or the cavernous segment of the oculomotor nerve which lies at the superior and the lateral corner of the cavernous sinus. The CSF around this oculomotor nerve which is called the oculomotor system can be enlarged in benign intracranial hypertension. Coming to the fourth trochlear cranial nerve, this is the one of the thinnest cranial nerves and is very hard to see unless you have taken 0.5 mm cis or fiesta sequences. It arises from the dorsal aspect of the midbrain unlike the other cranial nerves. This is an overview of the fifth cranial nerve which arises from its nucleus in the pons. It has a gasserian ganglion which lies in the Meckel scape and it has three branches hence trigeminal. First is the ophthalmic branch which courses through the superior orbital fissure. Second is the 
maxillary branch which courses through the foramen rotundum and third is the mandibular branch which courses through the foramen ovary. This is a coronal image stack showing the cisternal segment of the fifth cranial nerve. Coming anteriorly, this is the dural cave segment that is the Meckel's cave segment of the fifth cranial nerve which is seen immediately inferior to the cavernous sinus and immediately superior to the foramen ovary. These represent the locations of the foraminal segments of the fifth cranial nerve that is the foramen rotundum for the maxillary division which communicates with the pterygopalatine fossa and the foramen oval for the mandibular division which communicates with the infratemporal fossa. This is the nuclear and parenchymal segments of the 6th and 7th cranial nerves. Which there is a paradox here. At the level of the 4th ventricle, we see a bulging along the anterior margin of the 4th ventricle, which is called the facial colliculus. But in fact, the nucleus for the 6th cranial nerve lies underneath the facial colliculus instead of the facial nucleus. This is an overview of the abducens nerve. This is the nuclear and the parenchymal segment, the short cisternal segment, the cavernous sinus or the interdural segment and the extra foramen or the intraorbital segment. Now the cisternal segment of the sixth cranial nerve is unique because it ascends instead of descending through the CSF which is well seen in the sagittal image. This is also a thin nerve and will not be seen unless you have taken at least 0.5 mm thin cis or fiesta images. In the actual images, it is seen immediately after the pons ends and just at the beginning of the medulla. Anterior inferior cerebellar artery is seen across this, its location. This demonstrates the cisternal as well as the interdural segments of the sixth cranial nerve. The ascending part surrounded by CSF is the cisternal segment. While the Interdural segment is not well seen on this plane image, but it can be seen very well on a post contrast image. This is an overview of the seventh cranial nerve. Now, there are different ways of classifying the segments of the seventh cranial nerve. On the left is one of the ways, on the right is a simple, simpler way. The cisternal segment is also known as the intracranial segment. Canalicular segment is also known as the segment in the internal auditory canal. The labyrinthine and the tympanic segments represent the foraminal segments. They are also known as the intratemporal segment. While the descending and the parotid segments are also known as the extratemporal segments and these represent the extraforaminal segments of the seventh cranial nerve. So one should be familiar with all these terms in order to discuss the findings with the EAT segment. This is the actual Petrus bone CT showing the dural cave and the foraminal segments of the 7th cranial nerve. The part of the 7th cranial nerve in the internal auditory canal of the IAC is actually not the foraminal segment but the dural cave segment because it is surrounded by CSF. The foraminal segment consists of the labyrinthine part and the tympanic part between which lies the turn of the facial nerve which is known as the geniculate segment. This is again the dural cave or the intracranicular segment of the facial nerve seen on coronal images. There is mild hyperenhancement of the left sided facial nerve. This is the same patient in axial. Now this is an important section which shows the sagittal view of the intracranicular segment and it shows two nerves, seventh as well as the eighth nerve. So four structures are four round structures are seen in this image. On the left is anterior and on the right is posterior. The easy way to remember is that posteriorly is the vestibular nerve which is the 8th nerve and anteriorly are the 7th and the that is the facial and the cochlear nerve. So an easy mnemonic to remember this is 7 up and coca cola. So 7 is up that is facial nerve is superiorly and coca cola is below. So cochlear is below. The 9th 10th and the 11th cranial nerves are grouped together because of the common origin and they course very close to each other and ultimately course together through the jugular foramen. While scrolling these nerves, 
it is virtually they are indistinguishable from each other and they follow each other in close succession the 9th and the 10th cranial nerves both of them will course through the glossopharyngeal foramen unlike the 9th and the 10th cranial nerves the 12th cranial nerve courses fairly inferiorly and has a separate foramen which is known as the hypoglossal canal so here we can see in axial ct the hypoglossal canal which as well as in the mri also we can see it it lies much below the expected location of the glossopharyngeal canal all of these relationships can be better seen on the image stacks which will come next this is a sagittal t2 stack these are the semicircular canals cochlea here are the four structures which we have seen before in the internal auditory canal seven of that is the facial nerve anteriorly and superiorly and coca cola that is the cochlea inferiorly and superior and inferior vestibular nerves posterior this is the axial cis fiesta stack which most of us are used to seeing and it will show majority of the cranial nerves so going from top to bottom this is the system segment of the third cranial nerve this subtle line is the fourth cranial nerve So this is the terminal and the metal scape segment of the fifth cranial nerve. These thin lines seen at the quantum angular junction will be the sixth cranial nerve. Immediately below the sixth cranial nerve would be the seventh and the eighth cranial nerves in the internal auditory canal. An acoustic sonoma is seen on the right side. below the 7th and the 8th cranial nerves there is a landmark which you can see on either side which is known as the cerebellar flocculus and it lies between the 7th and the 8th and the 9th and the 10th cranial nerves inferiorly so in summary knowing cranial nerve anatomy is vital in mri reporting cranial nerves can be divided into segments based on the structures through which they are passing Each segment has different imaging and pathologies, and segmental anatomy helps in locating pathology and planning surgery. Cyst and fiesta is the cornerstone of cranial nerve imaging, and this talk is based on the excellent article by Blitz A M at all. Thank you very much.